Ancestry DNA has revolutionized the way that we research and climb our family tree, and they have a new DNA match tool that I want to talk about. Now, Ancestry allows you to take your DNA kit and attach it to one tree. So DNA can only be attached to one tree. However, one tree can have more than one DNA kit attached to it. But what happens if you want to have DNA that is attached to a different tree linked to your tree? The new tool on Ancestry makes that possible. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics. And if you're new to DNA research, I want you to grab this free guide, the answers to the five most common DNA questions. The link will be found in the description box below. And in fact, all links that I mention to other videos and other resources will be in the show notes that you'll find in that box. What this new linking tool for your match list does is allow you to go and find your relatives and tell yourself, I know that this person on my DNA match list matches a specific person on my family tree that I have built on Ancestry. And the advantage of this little icon, besides allowing you to visually see the progress of your research, but it allows you to click on this icon and jump to that person's tree. And in short, what happens is now you can link your tree to the DNA of other people without bumping into the rule that a DNA can only be attached to one tree. So here we have my DNA match list, and I have started to tag a number of my relatives. As I'm scrolling down, I find one of my relatives who is not in my tree. So we're gonna go to David Geisler. If I click on his name, in this view, you can see this icon that allows me to link this person to someone in my tree. But first, let me see how we are related. Who is our most recent common ancestor? Well, our most recent common ancestor is Henry Joseph and Margar Margareta Magdalena Hope. And that is where on his tree, he has them and then I have them. They're one more generation back because I'm actually younger than this man. And my generation's a little bit one generation below, but this is our most recent common ancestor. So I actually have my distant cousin David in my family tree and I can come over here and start typing David in my tree. And when I click on that name, all of a sudden this icon changes color and I can view in the tree. If I ever need to break the link, like I don't want them in my tree anymore for whatever reason, or it was a mistake, then I can click remove right here. So if I view in the tree, then Ancestry takes me right to where he's located on my family tree. I can also see that there's a DNA icon right there and we can go to back and forth between the two profiles. So I can go to me, my match list, and I can go to the view profile and we're right back here to the shared match list. Now back on this profile page, we can see that David's um, name has been updated to have the icon right beside it that I have connected him to my tree. So what happens when you have a DNA match that did not have a tree online, like this Eric, I've actually met Eric, and he doesn't have a tree online, but you have added him to your tree, well, what happens then? Well, let me walk you through the process. So we're gonna click on their name and we're gonna click on that icon. And once again, we're gonna start typing their name and there they are. And we can go back and forth between their tree and he has the icon updated. Now, what happens if they are not yet in your tree and you discover that they are, should be in your tree, what do you do then? Well, in that case, let's scroll up to Jeffrey Howard Merritt. Now, Jeffrey recently took a DNA test and he has an unlinked tree. So if we go click on him 
on Linktree, you can tell, I already know how he's related. So he has a public tree and he is the grandson of Dorothy Ann Zemstein. And Dorothy is very instrumental in getting me started in genealogy because she shared a lot of data with my mother in 1975 and everything I've inherited from my Canadians, I got from Dorothy Ann Zemstein. So she's really awesome and I'm glad that um, Jeffrey does have his tree, this little partial tree online. So what do I do in order to get the link to work? I'm going to have to build out from Dorothy to Jeffrey. Now I need to come down and add a relative. For this purpose of this video, I'm just going to add that there was a son and we're just going to say anonymous and then on below the anonymous, I know who it is, but I'm not letting you know who it is. I'm going to add the son Jeffrey. Yeah, not a spouse, a son. So I'm going to add Jeffrey and now I can go back over here, click on this icon, type Jeffrey and I can connect to Jeffrey. And when I go back to my DNA match list, Jeffrey is connected and there it goes through. It's pretty slick. One thing to keep in mind, if you do add living people to the ancestry tree, Ancestry will automatically privatize their information. So only you, when you log in, can see the information about living people. But when other people access your tree, even if it is a public tree, no one will be able to see all the details about the living person. So do keep that in mind. So that's how you do it. Let's talk about should you use it? What are the, some great things about it? And maybe not so great things about it that people have been discovering since this tool has been out since early 2020. So my colleague, uh, Larry Jones, who put this video out in May, the question Larry posed that I agree with the most his answer was, does this linking tool help your research? And the jury's still out on this. Now, what Larry says, and if you have never seen Larry on camera, you'll want to check out this video interview that we did with him where he actually showed his face. A number of followers over on DNA Family Tree really enjoyed that series, so be sure to check it out. You will have to sign up to FHF Extra, and all the information is in the description. But what Larry said was that the DNA, Ancestry DNA linking tool for him right now is a lot of busy work. Now, if he was actively working on a question, which you might be, you might not find it so busy. But if you're a little casual right now, if you're on break, you're not, he's not completely motivated that this is just a game changer yet. The jury's still out and I, I tend to agree. Now, a number of people have complained that you cannot have your tree that you go and connect all of the links to other people's trees be reflected in the trees of others that you manage. So now you have to do all of your tree linking and then all of the trees that you also manage. And it becomes a lot of busy work. So I don't know, what do you think? Let me know. I personally didn't jump up and down with this tool because for me, I find more value, like I shared with you in this video, Color Code Your DNA Matches, by using these colored dots. This tells me where people are linked, and then I use a lot of notes. So I guess this is a way to navigate to where those people are quickly and back and forth, which brings me to my next problem. In my blog post, um, Reduce Your Unnecessarily Large Family Tree, I talk about my strategy for using paid service programs versus using the one world family tree over family search, which is free. You could also use Wikitree for this as well. But I build my large family trees over on family search, and then I have a research tree on ancestry. Typically, I like to combine the records in the DNA, but if we're supposed to as some um, big fans of this service say they build everybody out like every DNA connection they have they try to match them into their tree 
But then I am going to lose my mind because Ancestry gives me tree hints. And when I am struggling to do DNA uh, genealogy and I need a little pick me up or I'm working on a brick wall and I want to just do something casual, well, then I'll go look in my hint feature and I will go through and just start working the hints. So I'll go through and, and work this person and this person. But the more people that I put into the family tree on Ancestry, the more hints I'm going to have and it's going to drive me crazy. Are you like me or are you vastly different? I would really like to know. Um, so what's my solution if I'm going to take advantage of this DNA aspect and still keep my sanity for my research? Well, I think then the only solution is to have two trees on Ancestry and you can do that. I actually have several trees on Ancestry. I have my Geisler Brown tree. I have a project tree that I have. I have my Uncle Bob's tree and I have several others that I throw on from time to time when I'm working on a project. So I'm on the fence whether I really want to jump up and do this, but the only solution then in order to do all the DNA matches would be to have a research tree and on my, or a DNA tree and my research tree. And my DNA tree, I guess it would have to be a public tree without sources, which is going to make other genealogists think I'm not a good researcher, but I don't want to manage the sources in multiple places. Um, but I would have all of my family lines and I would ignore any hints that come up through this tree and it would just be genetic. So I have, a, my grandmother was adopted, so I'd only put the DNA relatives. We had some DNA surprises, so I would only put the biological relationships in this tree and I wouldn't have the record relationships, just the biological relationships. And then I would know that when I'm working in this tree, I'm only using it to build a tree and get all these third, fourth, and fifth living people, cousins thrown into that tree and call it good. And then I would have to have another tree, which would be my research tree. And um, it could have biological and genealogical, but the emphasis of this tree would be the genealogical data with a little bit of the DNA thrown in as I find the caveats and the surprises and get them all untangled in that way. And this way I can focus on um, my relatives, uh, specific relatives. So let's use my surname table chart. And if you've never seen a surname table chart, if you haven't built one yet, um, hold on a minute and I will show you um, where you can learn more about it. But this is my surname table. This is my um, four great grandparents, but this is the adopted line. So in that first tree, the DNA tree, I would have to exclude everybody here. And then there are some oopsies along some of these lines. And so I would kind of have to exclude them. And any other times, let's say this was an oopsie line, a DNA surprise line, I would have to exclude all of them just to focus on the biological portion of the tree. And then if I just want to do the genealogical tree, then I can do everybody here. But remember, I want to do targeted, targeted research. So as much as I love these folks and I claim them as my ancestors, I'm only really researching these guys. I'm researching my Townsends, which also picks up a lynch. I'm researching... Uh, um, actually, I'm not researching any of these guys. Sorry, there's so many researchers over here. I really can't make any headway on there. But I care about um, these names right here. And then I would just have to put these guys in there. I'm actually kind of interested in the Weekly and the Anderson. So then my genealogical tree would just be focused on them. So I'm just tailored, laser focused on just the um, brick walls that I'm working on and the casual building out the tree, maybe. I really haven't decided. Um, it's, kind of con it's kind of hard to make a decision because of the bigger you make your tree, the more data there is, and you can easily go down rabbit holes and not make progress on the research that you're hoping to make on. Now, if you haven't built a surname table before, make sure you find this video handy and accessible through the links in the descriptions. Now, before I give you a few more things that I would like to see 
in the link matching tool in order for me to say, yes, this is awesome. Um, let me invite you to check out Andy's book. Andy is my husband that does most of the DNA videos here on Family History Fanatics. He has a book called DNA Q&A, Real Questions from Real People About Gen Genetic Genealogy. And if you haven't picked up a copy of this yet, you're going to enjoy the questions that you probably have already thought about of and the ones you probably don't know you should have thought of all in one book, really easy to read and super fun. So what would I like to see improved on the DNA match linking tool for me to be jumping up and down and say, this is the best thing ever. One of the things I would like to see is that we have these through lines and if this is gonna be an awesome tool, it really needs to feed into the through lines. What I would really like to see is that if you do this extra linking, that those people should show up on your through lines no matter where they are. So on my tree, um, I should have my brother and he's not here. I should also have a branch for another two aunts and they're not there and a cousin and they're not here because we're all descendants from Samuel Curtis Brown, but Samuel is not in their trees. And for some reason, it's not passing through and picking them up. There's also a son of Brian and he's not showing up. But I've done that linking thing, that new tool that they have, and it's not showing up. So if that could get fixed, then I would, I would be more excited about the usefulness of the tool. Maybe it's coming, maybe I did something wrong. I'm not sure, but it's, it's still, the jury's still out on how excited I would be about that. Another thing I've alluded to it before, it, this is my brother's tree. I would really like for when I link to him, he links to me and I don't have to do that extra step. And that's just because I manage his tree. Now you can't automatically improve that in other people's trees because that cre could create a nightmare. But if you're a manager of these trees, it wouldn't be nice to be able to make it populate to the other person's tree and create that backlink super quickly. The other thing someone suggested, and I thought this was really interesting, and that was once you make a link, you see how this says close family? And this is my brother's DNA match list. What would be really great is if it changed once we click that little link, that this becomes aunt, and then this becomes aunt, and this becomes first cousin or second cousin, depending on where they fall in the tree. So it'd be nice if that happened and that'd be kind of cool. The one thing that would make it just knock it out of the park, as I mentioned in this video, is that I want a chromosome browser. Because with a chromosome browser, I can know the quality of the matches that Ancestry is recommending more than just the trees people have built. Because remember, a tree is only as good as the people who created it. But a chromosome browser can definitely validate how you're related. So what do you think? Are you excited? to have these new tools from Ancestry. Let me know how you're using them. If you wanna learn more about Ancestry through lines, check out the videos right there. And if you've seen those videos, if you've seen those videos already, then check out this video that we think you might like.